Welcome to chapter 9 of Rehuman, Cultural Text. We'll be discussing a little bit about the geography of ethnicity and race. So really this is probably the most important topic that you'll be reading about uh, in this text, is really about understanding the differences between ethnicity and race. And it comes back to the main question is when someone asks you, well, what are you? How does that answer? How do you... Um, what, what answer are they looking for, you know? And that's what this is really about. So you'll learn really specific the differences between race, ethnicity, and then uh, nationality. Um, so as an example, you know, race in, in, much, in, many, in much of our academic world is not um, a viable resource. We don't use it because it's really um, a visual category that is based off of three primary uh, elements being such as pigmentation of someone's skin. That doesn't mean anything other than it's a visual aspect. Um, it'd be just kind of like, you know, anything that's orange must taste orange, like an orange, and that's not the case. You know, so we can't, it's not really a valid piece, especially when we try to use race uh, to identify the way in actions and the way people act. And, you know, well, just because they look like this, that must means they must do that. Um, and I think that when it comes into this idea of race and ethnicity and nationality, uh, it comes in the very awkward conversation of privilege, you know, and talking about different types of privilege. You know, there's not just, you know, ideas of white privilege, but there's also heterosexual privilege, and there's also different types of, of ways of viewing that and to uh, understand that certain groups have privileges and other groups will have disadvantages. Both, everyone has a privilege. It's very different in how it's looked at, and it could be because of um, your gender, it could be because of your height, it could be because of your color, there's all these different attributes that go within that. By no means am I saying that privileges are, and this is an appropriate way to, to, to live your life, but to understand that that's the reality, is that when looking at certain things, that this does come through. But I think that the, you know what I'm saying is that you need to be able to acknowledge it and understand what that means. You know, it's not uh, designed to be a, an offensive statement, uh, that it's not designed to be offensive to ask, someone's uh, ethnic background or cultural background. I think that's more important. I mean, uh, you know, many people, as you'll learn throughout this text, like to, people like labels. They like to be able to identify something or someone in a particular way. But how do we really define that? Um, so that's what this is about, uh, the difference between ethnicity and race. And as you will find, um, the ethnic values are much more important uh, than the racial values. Um, as an example, we see a lot, and the author does a great job with this, by comparing um, ethnic pieces to uh, food, you know, that we have these ethnic flavoring and spices locations. And, you know, how, how does that reference, and how do we identify that? You know, I think that's a much easier way to comprehend ethnicity is through food, and to look at it through that way. Um, then moving forward, we find that also ethnicity has a has, uh, you'll see there's correlations with religion, there's correlations with space and time, and so it really works out a lot easier that way. Um, something else that the book kind of covers that I thought was quite interesting uh, is looking at then ethnic landscapes, uh, not just um, certain areas, uh, you know, by, by space and place, but actually looking at the landscapes, looking at um, the design of palm trees or uh, adobe huts or really what we consider um, and in cultural geography, there's this term that we use, it's called the Buzz and Woody era, uh, which makes reference to Space Age being the Buzz and the Woody being more of the cowboy themed. You know, so looking at uh, ethnicity themed tourism, perhaps you've seen there the hotels are made out of concrete, but they look like teepees, which was a huge market in the 1950s on Route 66, was to be able to, you know, experience the American West, to, to be able to see these different attributes. We also see um, mascots for, for sports teams. Um, you know, you can see um, in particular like Sequoia National Park, uh, their big sign used to have the face of, uh, of, a, of a Native American with a headdress, and that was part. So, you know, that's where it comes into interpretation as being that are the, whose benefits from this? Is this designed to be racial or racist, being that you know, one is better than the other, that's what the idea of racist means, or is this perhaps uh, culturally insensitive? It depends on the people you speak with, because, you know, it, in some cases, some of these ideas and landscape attributes are reminiscent of 
of a, you know, of a different time, but in other cases, it can be done in some form of derogatory term. And the big question for us as geographers is to sit back and observe it and try to understand both sides. You know, is it appropriate to have uh, an athletic team called the Redskins? You know, and then you bring in that conversation. And I think that, that those are things, and again, I think that when we come to a human and cultural geography, there's a lot of topics that become very uncomfortable. But I think it's important to bring it up because it's, it's a way for us to to listen to both sides. I heard a great conversation. It was a TED um, talk that I, had, I had, was present at, and they talked about the uh, the team, the, the Redskins. And they had obviously different groups of people discussing you know, the offensiveness versus the acknowledgement of a group of people, you know, and how some people, some of the um, uh, native uh, individuals from where that team was found felt that it was a way for them to uh, to signify and to distinguish a particular group of people to give them a, a prominent face in uh, the sports world. And other people saw it as a, really as a derogatory statement by saying that it's, you're going back into the idea of what 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 are the definitions of race and one of the biological aspects is color. So when working through this text, I think there's a lot of great ways to interpret both um, the ideas of nationality, which is the place that you were born, uh, the ethnicity, which is more of your cultural influence, and then race is more of just the visual aspect, and we'll find, and then, you know, and I'm hoping that you find that through the course of this text and through just working through this, that race is really the most useless out of all of them. You know, it's just, you know, kind of going back, especially how a lot of individuals use race to try to um, stereotype or try to understand. It's like, well, I ate one sour orange, therefore all oranges are sour, and it's not the case. You can't, you cannot uh, justify that statement. You know, just based off pigmentation, and we find that's a lot, especially when looking at crime. That there's a lot of individuals that will rely on racial attributes uh, first, versus looking at some of the other elements that are at hand, and. You know, that's what this is really about, is to be able to understand those differences and to understand really when is when is a situation racist or when is it dealing with um, cultural insensitivity to their background. So, uh, nonetheless, uh, I think that you'll enjoy this. There's some great maps, some interactive aspects uh, that discuss really the differences between um, also within landscapes of what was considered white flight, uh, and you'll learn more about that, looking at gentrification and how that is truly Although people, you know, it looks nice, uh, gentrification is a terrible thing in the sense that it creates displacement. It creates displacement of usually under underrepresented and lower income individuals, which unfortunately it also happened to be uh, what we consider people of color. And the, this idea of gentrification is, is really a hardship culturally. And so, you know, how, did, how do we address displacement? How do we address these, what we consider um, ghetto typologies, um, and these essentially the roundabout piece of ethnic landscape. So, uh, nonetheless, I think this is a very interesting topic. Uh, I think you might even find something here which would be appropriate for your term paper. But uh, enjoy, and uh, we'll talk soon.